Hi everyone, I'm Allie from Artawigs Canada. Thanks for tuning in for another Artawigs Canada at home video. Our aim for this series is to bring the best wig and crafting resources to you at home. Today I'm going to be hosting one of our most popular and requested panels, Advanced Wig Styling. We ask people to submit questions and requests online to help make this series the most educational and fun that it can be. Maybe we'll answer yours today. When I get a bundle of wefts, I like to open it up slowly and cut off anywhere from around a foot and a half because uh, it's much easier to work with a section this size than the full eight foot length. Another really handy tip that I have is actually taking a few layers and just running them through a sewing machine or hand sewing them together so that you have a larger chunk for sewing in. You can add wefts to every single row or every few rows of a wig for either fullness or dimension of color, which in this case I've done both. So in this wig, it started out as cherry red and I added an entire extra wig of crimson wefts into it. So personally, I hand sewed all of these wefts in because I find that when the wig stretches and the elastics pull and move, it fits nicely around the head. However, if you are pressed for time, you can glue them in. One of the more advanced questions we get is how to do a ventilated lace front. So a lot of our wigs do come with that extra chunk of lace if you need to modify or completely add a hairline. So this is one that I personally did. I marked out where it was going and then I hand tied one to three strands of hair in each one of the holes here. This can take a long time. It is quite an intense process, but again, put on a TV show or a series that you really like or some music and just go at it. So this is a ventilating needle. It's meant to be used with one to two or two to three, depending on the size of the hook uh, fibers at once and you essentially rug hook them in through these holes. We do have a tutorial on this, which is linked. Ventilating is just a really cool way to add a little bit of extra flair to a hairline or to help cover up your actual hairline. Another technique we get asked about often is creating a more realistic root. So this is actually done with an art marker that's alcohol based and it's a shade of brown that I just markered on and pulled through gently so that it would get a soft and realistic touch. One of the questions we got was about splicing. Now, while we do have a video about that, I will show our Kyle style. So this is one of the two styles that we have that come in an undercut and have a longer wig over it. This is essentially two different wigs put together. It's a Rocky and a Cane to create its own undercut style. So this is the opposite two ends of a wig that I put together. So this is what we're left over with, but I'll demonstrate with them today. So these are both Jareth wigs that I turned inside out and cut in the same area. So essentially there were two full wigs. I marked out where to cut the top off and I did it on both sides. And then you're left over with the top and the bottom. You can hand sew the one wig on the wefts or on the elastic to the other. You can either do this by hand, you can glue it, or you can run it through a sewing machine if you're nice and careful. This is a Silky Nina in Titanium Blonde that I dyed two different colors to a slight ombre. One of the questions that we got was how to dye a wig two different colors. So for this, I used the Rit Dye More Synthetic dyes. Uh, I wanted it to be very subtle, so I didn't leave it in for too long. The longer you leave it in the boil, the darker the color you're gonna get. We recommend buying singular color samples in the same color as your base to test how long you need to leave it in the mix. This one specifically, I isolated the section that I wanted to dye the first color, and I used two barbecue prongs to hold them inside the boil so that I get the color I wanted for the amount of time I wanted. Then after that, I isolated the next section and I dipped that in the color as well. Again, using those barbecue tongs because I didn't want to burn my hands at all. So we're gonna delve into spiking 2.0 because actually quite a few of the questions that we received are about this topic. 
So we showed you spiking and heat styling, but we're gonna go over it a little bit more intensely for advanced styling. So there's a lot of characters that have really, really big spikes and strange shapes. One of the things that we recommend is creating some sort of armature to go underneath. This is a styrofoam cone. And this is four millimeter form light EVA foam from Lumen's Workshop. The cool thing about this is that you can actually create different shapes. So this is just a basic cone shape that if you were to glue it together on the seams, you'd get a soft and small cone. But you can do this for any size and you can create geometric shapes. Just think about your pattern first and the way you would use these armatures. It's once it is either painted the same color as the wefts or you've painted it and covered it with some wefts. You isolate the inside of a spike. You can either get rid of some of the hair here or just tease it and pull it around it. And you can either glue your shape down or if it's felt, you can hand sew it in. So I love the concept of hand sewing anything in a wig rather than gluing it because it creates less permanency. That way down the line you can use it for something else or you can fix it up by taking it out completely and redoing it. Essentially in the end it would look a little like that. So you would still build your spike the same way I told you how to build it in the heat styling video, except instead of teasing that intersection to create the base, your base, is a solid object and then you build around that using heat. Thank you so much for watching another Artowigs Canada at home video. Today we did advanced styling and hopefully you're a little bit more equipped to tackle some advanced styles. If you do have any more questions you can always email us at info at